All right there, designers. So this quick screencast is intended for my teachers out there who are into the idea of 3D designing and 3D drafting with their students, but maybe struggling with how to manage the workflow and project status for 20, 30, 100, 180 students at a time. And so I thought I would just share what's worked for me. Um, it's not a perfect system, but this is the workflow process that I use when we're working on a 3D design proje project in class. Um, it starts with creating a Google Doc. Um, I really like the power of uh, Google Docs in terms of how sharing and collaborating works. And we're gonna leverage that in this process here. So I make a Google Doc and then I embed a table into that document. And that table is gonna have different pieces of information that I am looking for from my students. Um, I fill out the column for student name and I find that to be really valuable so that students know exactly where they're gonna be putting their work and sharing their progress. Um, it also lets me know if anybody is, you know, needs a little bit of assistance and is struggling with making project Pro progress on the project. Um, so I populate that myself from my digital roster source. I use School Loop. Um, you probably have your own way of getting your uh, roster digitally and then putting that into a data table. Um, a screenshot of the project, I make a column for screenshots because that way students can show me visually where they're at in terms of developing their project. Um, I really like having a column on reflection on learning. I think we learn a lot through reflecting on our pro progress. And so I make a column where students can reflect on what they're learning, what they're trying to accomplish, maybe what they're struggling with or what they've learned from the project. And then I give them a column for the a link to the STL file so that we can access their prints and actually bring them to, to life when we're gonna go ahead and run these different prints of the projects that they're creating. Um, and then I like a column for printing status, which I find to be valuable for me or for them so we can take notes on which ones have been printed or which ones need modification before they can be printed. And then the real power comes from sharing this with my class. I use Google Classroom to do this, and I give all of my students editing rights to the document where they're going to be documenting their, their progress. And it's kind of a neat way of helping students make their practice public and sharing with one another what they're working on and what they're developing. And so here's an example of that that was created as I had students exploring a variety of projects um, in Tinkercad. Tinkercad has a lot of projects and I wanted students to explore and navigate some of those projects on their own. There's a lot of variety there and so I let them pick a project that they wanted to work on and you can see here, here's a column for student name. Here's where they're giving me a screenshot of the image of what they've created um, and then I asked them to tell me what they learned from completing the project uh, and then off to the side here I have them give me a link to their STL file. Now, I highly recommend for this that you have them give you the link to the downloaded STL as opposed to as, as opposed to using the sharing feature embedded in Tinkercad because the Tinkercad links do expire. But if they download their STL, then they won't expire and you can access those things later. Uh, so here's another iteration of it. This one I used um, Google Sheets in, or instead, and it doesn't have the screenshots on it, but this was a, a design challenge that we were tackling, trying to help another class on campus come up with a mold for some butterfly seed pods that they were creating. Um, and so we've got a lot, of, a lot of work here in the comment status trying to get things figured out. And then the green ones are the ones that actually worked for the class. And they were the, the students that, that met that design challenge and we were able to give them um, valid files that they could print to, to move on with their own project in their class. Um, here's one that's kind of neat that just kind of shows how we work with multiple STL files. So this is for the enable project. And here you can see student name, um, this one, I wanted them to give me the source files where they were getting their files from because they were working with some files that were loaded onto Thingiverse by the Enabling the Future group. And then here are a, here's a great use of their batch printing of their hands. So each one of these individual fingers here represents an individual STL that the student had to access and then bring into Tinkercad. And then you'll see there's a link to the STL that'll help us print the fingers. Here's a link to the STL that will help us print the palm block and the other parts in order to make a prosthetic device come in, uh, come to life. So you can kind of see the way this works, student name, uh, source STLs, and then students learn how to uh, export their STL files, save them on Google Drive, 
and then provide a link to those so they can be accessed by other people. It's kind of a neat process. I really like the visual piece that's the screenshot and then the embedded links that helps everybody access their files that they've been working on. And hopefully you find this process manageable and workable as well. So I'm um, happy designing and I hope this helps you bring this to life in your classroom. Uh, if you have your own way of doing this, go ahead and post that in the comments. I'd love to see if you've got your own suggestions for this process. And uh, if you like what you see, be sure to check out my other videos on working with Tinkercad that are on the Satili Science YouTube channel. Uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and thanks for watching.